Ten and a half years ago, Sheriff Larry Emerson, along with Brother Sid Nichols from the Baptist Association, uh, asked me to come to a meeting I attended, and at that time there were 29 other pastors in this very room talking about uh, bringing on board a chaplain full time. Uh, the problem was there was no money to pay for it. So it was decided that it would be a missionary position and that all the funds would have to be raised from the local Christian community. Well, the, the real truth is, is that we run between 550 and 600 inmates in a jail that was built for half of that. So we have overcrowding. And then within that, you have all classes from society. You have people who have committed misdemeanors, uh, very small crimes, up to people who have uh, committed serious crimes, class A felonies such as murder, murder with intent, things of those nature, and of course the drug population. Well, my thing is behind every inmate. There's a mother, a father, children, husband, wife, grandparents, and those people are at home hurting. There's so much behind the scenes. There's, as Richard said, Chaplain Green, there's so much hurt that we can minister to, make a difference in the lives of those folks at home. Well, when I leave my office and go through the outer door, we start getting into the secure part of the jail. At any time to get to any particular section, you have to go through a series of three or four steel doors. That is not easy on a person's uh, stress level because so often as, as you go into what I call the Thunderdome and back where we have the sections, established, there will be such noise and screaming and hollering and dysfunction that when I walk into a section, it doesn't stop just because I walk into the section. Now usually if there are some people there who truly want to hear the word at that particular time, they will uh, encourage the other men to settle down and allow us to have a service. Thank you, buddy. Like the other guys that come in here, they're, they're lost without no family members. You know, I tell them, look, look where I'm at and look where I was. I didn't have no bridges to my family or none of that stuff. But I mean, once you give your life to Christ, I mean, actually start believing and trusting in the Lord, man, the doors are open. I'm telling you, the doors open so fast. And that's what I've been trying to tell everybody that comes in there. Just, you just give it time. Just try it, you know. Just ask. Just ask. That's all they got to do is just ask and the doors will open. And it, it works, and um, believe me, it works. Well, I think the most important thing, if they are interested in helping us, yes, they can donate, but probably the best thing is, we need, the thing we need most is money. And we, that money is used very judiciously. It's either used for Chaplain Green's salary, which I'm just a volunteer, but or to buy supplies that we need for the inmates. Most people are not interested in, in this particular mission because they have an attitude that uh, they've committed a crime. Those people, whoever those people are, need to be locked away, out, away from society. But what you and I and others in the ministry feel must concentrate on daily, this has to be part of our prayer, and that is, Lord, let me remember that you would have me to treat them as my brother. Because, you know, it's, the, the foundation is there. It's just me to build on it now. The foundation has been laid and it's my road to Damascus. I just got to walk it. You know what I mean? I just got to walk it. And it's there, though. I guess one of the biggest obstacles I face is wanting to come back each day. There are days when, when I truly, I'm like, Lord, has my journey here been successful? Has my journey here come to an end? And I tell you, as of right now, 
we're, we're wide open. We could not stop if we wanted to. I could not stop if I wanted to. There's a, there's a mission field here, as a friend of mine often says. There's a mission field here in our own backyard, Calhoun County. 